Fabrizio Romano is without a doubt one of the most influential people in football journalism at the moment. He is one of the first people to break almost every football transfer story. He's absolutely everywhere, from brand new rumours to incredible memes somehow. This journalist has completely changed the football landscape, but is that a good thing? And who is Fabrizio Romano? How did he get to this position? Born in 1993, Romano started his career as a football journalist in just 2009 at the age of 16. His big break came in 2011 when he helped to announce the transfer of Mauro Icardi away from Barcelona B. That was one of the big scoops that really kicked off his career and got him up and running. He speaks three languages, Spanish, Italian and English. So he's on top of all the biggest sources and he's absolutely everywhere for all of the biggest clubs. And he spent something like 17 hours a day on his phone throughout the transfer market. That is an absolutely insane amount of time. And to be fair, the dedication is unmatched. There is absolutely no doubt that he's good at his job. That's why he made the Forbes 30 under 30 list. But what does Romano do? How does he get into these positions? And the first of these things to consider is his sources. This is where he varies a little bit from traditional journalism in that his sources are, shall we say, biased, heavily biased. For example, he recently said this on a podcast with Micah Richards and Gary Lineker. So, Fabrizio, do you speak to players who want to move? So a lot of the players are directly testing, or I'm testing them too sometimes, to ask information. So sometimes they tell me, please, can you say something about me because I want to leave the club? <laughs> so, yes, it's happening. So you get some um, top players sliding into your DMs, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I was now, that seems like an uppity and happy little section of video, and it is, to be fair. There's nice little jokes, but in there you can see a sort of fundamental issue. He's getting messages directly from players saying, I want to make a move, which, fair enough, that's fine, but a lot of journalists will take the next step of corroborating their sources, of talking to the club and saying, is this true? Is there actually a deal going on here? Can we discuss it a little bit further? That's how you get the extended stories that a lot of journalists that say The Athletic go for. For example, Adam Crafton doing his like investigations into the Mason Greenwood case, reached out to Manchester United, and in response, Manchester United put out a story ahead of him, which was not widely acceptable amongst media circles, and that's why The Athletic kicked back so hard against them. And Romano doesn't seem to do this. Romano receives his information and then just tweets it and goes because he wants to be the first on the story. And there's a potential risk of this turning into what is effectively client journalism. Now, what I mean by this is journalism in which the journalist is taking one side distinctly or doesn't accurately, accurately report things because he's only been briefed by one side. good example is the Lewis Sinistera deal from the most recent transfer window, where he said that Bournemouth have reached a verbal agreement to sign Sinistera from Leeds United, here we go, being finalised between clubs as player already accepted, understand it's a lone move for the winger set to tra travel for the medical. Edited this at 3.48pm, however, slight issue with that, was uh, there hadn't been a deal agreed. He'd gotten a message presumably from Lewis Sinistera and his agent, who was very, very public on deadline day about wanting to force the move and find freedom and stuff like that. And he tweeted this out without the clubs having met an agreement because it was something that went to a deal sheet with Jaden Anthony coming the other way. It's a distinct issue in his reporting, I think, where he's not gotten all the information from all the sources. You had the likes of Phil Hay and Graham Smith, who are reliable reporters for Leeds United, saying there isn't a deal. There's definitely interest. There's conversations happening, but there isn't a deal yet. And it feels like Romano jumped the gun to get ahead of things. In terms of what else Romano does is sometimes clubs have this thing called an embargo where they set a distinct bit of news to go out at a certain time. So if they are confirming that a player has signed at 10 p.m., they will ask other journalists to say, can you put the official confirmation out at 10 p.m. for us? Just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Now, Romano might have all this information, might have had a discussion with the club, might have gotten this embargo, and then he releases it at 9.58 p.m. in order to get ahead of the news. and. It's understandable from his point of view, sort of, to get more engagement and stuff like that, especially as someone who, although he does write, for example, for The Guardian and for 90 Min, to get ahead of the news. But it's one of those annoying things where it's not how journalism has tended to work, and it's just a rush to put yourself first rather than get the accurate information out there. 
ultimately, is Romano good for transfer news? Depends on who you ask. I think he's good for getting information out there. He's good for empowering players a little bit, but he's not really the best for accurate information in terms of getting all of the sides of the story. We don't know how many moves have been made purely on the back of, hi Fabrizio, I want to leave Brighton or something like that. And then suddenly there's big interest and a club makes a bid and there's movement. And we don't know how much of that is natural and how much of that comes from this one Twitter account posting something and going, something's happening. Whereas in reality, there's absolutely nothing. It's a, another Leeds example is Cody Drama, who reportedly had interest from Dortmund and Newcastle and ended up going to Birmingham. It's all agent talk. And if Fabrizio Romano always takes the side of the agent, you're not getting an accurate picture of the transfer market. So what next? I say this as if anything will change. Romano will keep doing Romano things. Football journalism will continue in this speeding up way where it keeps on gathering pace. But I think at some point there's going to be a tipping point. There's going to be one deal where he only gets one side of a story and it doesn't stick in the slightest. And I think that's going to be a potential issue. The entire landscape is massively shifting on a constant basis and we can't predict what's going to happen next. Comment below what you think on this entire situation. Is he a positive or a negative for the transfer reporting space? Uh, like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe. It is massively appreciated. I will see you later.